What up? What up? What up? Hey, everyone. Welcome. I to, have returned. <laughs> welcome to the Bridgepoint Podcast. This is Pastor Matthew Peters, and we've got our faithful guest, Eli, What's up? with us today. Eli, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Fantastic. Yeah. Eli, today is, uh, as of recording, is uh, October 30th. Tomorrow is the infamous day that evangelicals cannot make up their minds about <laughs> Halloween. Yeah. Now, you have an interesting history and past, mm. and I believe that you have something substantive to say regarding the subject of Halloween. Um, I started watching a, I don't know, a History Channel special on what is Halloween, and frankly, you know, it was interesting to learn how witches uh, got their uh, images and broomsticks and so forth. Mm. Uh, I... I I was intrigued to find out some history that it actually used to be in the spring and they moved it around to the fall. And now there's all kinds of history around it. And of course, everyone sees the boogeyman and the devil in every single Halloween decoration yeah. or figure or trope, whatever we call it. And there are basically the, a, a broad spectrum of, Halloween um, practices among Christians. You know, there mm -hmm. are some Christians who are diametrically opposed to it. They see it as the satanic high holiday. This is uh, the night of the devil. It is their Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or uh, people can see it somewhere in the middle. Fun fact, I think that's probably where we're going to find me. Mm -hmm. um, it, as a co-opting, of uh, an ancient pagan holiday and the attempt to sort of uh, Christianize that in some way. Mm -hmm. And and then the argument goes against that is that there are, well, well, then what do you do with all these tropes? What do you do with all these forms? I mean, who in the world thinks that this is a, a, a great idea and, and then you tilt back towards the don't do it at all um, and then you can go all the way to the other side, which says, are you kidding me? There is virtually no bright line, no hyperlink anymore between all of the forms of Halloween. We're just giving kids candy. No one really do takes this seriously. Mm -hmm. Give me a break. OK, and you'll find the people way over here, the same kind of people that think that Christmas is non-biblical and it is biblical. Um, and that, you know, the, 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 that we shouldn't celebrate Easter because Easter is linked with Ishtar. Right. And we could, we could delve into all that. Yeah. And, and there are answers for all these things. And again, that's why I find myself in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then I, but I, what I find curious is that, do we really want our kids to dress up like witches? And do we really want to focus on death and fear? And these seem to be thoroughly repugnant to the Christian worldview. And so as someone who has come out of the occult yourself and myself as someone who was never involved in the cult, occult directly, but have ancestral ties to the occult and have experienced, let's say, um, more than sufficient, more than normal paranormal and demonic activity, I take these things uh, a little more seriously than mm -hmm. most. Mm -hmm. So the question we have for ourselves is Halloween. Why or why not? Why or why not? Yep. I feel like it's a double-edged sword because one side of me says you put in, you, you get out of it what you put into it. If you just make it about giving candy to kids and you're just giving candy to kids. But I mean, yeah, there's a whole spectrum, like you said, of different avenues of Halloween. I mean, some people believe that, you know, Halloween night is, you know, the, the, that like you said, it is it is Christmas Eve to Satan himself. Me, I mean, I don't really believe that. Well, okay. let's ask a different question, and, yeah. and I'm gonna let I'm gonna give you some sure. leash here. You know, uh, don't you sufficiently have evidence in your own personal experience with the occult that they took Halloween seriously, or is that? A, and and we we recognize right away that just saying a, a generalized statement blanket the occult, <laughs> Anton Lavey is different than than people who are listening to satanic rock music are pe different than people who practice wicca 
and more of those kind of mystical type things mm-hmm. and different from someone who uh, utilizes Satanism uh, like, say, Jay-Z. Um, I think that he exhibits some uh, sure. satanic overtures mm-hmm. and, and tones and statements. I, I can't prove anything about him. I just uh, I've listened to him rap and he kind of has a anti supernatural gift. Like when I listen to him rap, I go, that guy is like filled with the evil Holy Spirit. I, to, I hate to use terms like that. Sure. Like in the same way. I understand what you're saying. In the same way, you see people with extraordinary spiritual gifts exercising them and like they do things that are beyond human power and beyond human, just the normal of scope of skill mm-hmm. or talent, right? Jay-Z is is like the evil spirit empowered. Mm-hmm. And and I don't, I don't mean any disrespect to right. him or Beyonce. Yeah. Uh, I think that, that those people speak for themselves. So, but... To pencil sharp point, do you have evidence in your own personal experience, the vast spectrum of the occult that exists out there from what you experienced that there was some kind of emphasis, prominence or importance of Halloween? I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, just in its appearance alone, I mean, Halloween kind of invites that very nature to begin with. You know what I okay. mean? Um, I mean, for me, when I was with my my previous goons whatever um ghouls your satanic friends sure um we i mean yeah there were uh, halloween nights i was doing ouija boards and all kinds of stuff i mean and was that was that generally associated with it or specifically associated both it was both for me for me specifically okay so even though you have personal experience with mm-hmm. the specific connection of the occult at, as this being a high holiday, mm-hmm. you still say, it's just kids getting candy. Come yeah. on, people. You, you they, do. It does. I mean, it, to, it doesn't need to be Halloween. You know what I mean? But isn't it? I mean, folks, you can. They can leave comments. Sure. If you want to yeah. leave comments, we'll yeah. field these comments. Yeah. We, th- we're, we're not. And, and remember, th- this is filmed live. Mm-hmm. We don't edit this. Mm-hmm. So we're doing our best to just speak about a subject that we mm-hmm. have some experience with. Mm-hmm. And so what's the disconnect? So let me let me play pun intended devil's advocate here. <laughs> OK, um, you know, we we could say that all of the tropes of Christmas and all of the tropes of Easter. There are people who debate about this, but let's just we're going to go full on devil's advocate take all the pagan tropes okay in those holidays and then excuse them and say well there's no connection to the occult anymore there's no connection to ishtar there's no connection to to pagan holidays so it's a nothing now Mm. it doesn't have an actual connection it's become untethered Mm. right that seems to be the argument that you're making yeah i mean like in my own personal life, like I didn't need Halloween to be a Satanist. You know, I, I whether it was a Tuesday or if it was Halloween, it doesn't it doesn't matter to, to me in my own personal. I don't know about other people. I mean, that, but to me, you know, uh, d- did I experience or did I have more? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, more touch with the dark side on Halloween. Yeah. Me personally, I I mean, I saw no difference. You saw no difference. Yeah. And so today, um, you, you celebrate Halloween. Mm. I, I do. And I don't. Okay. I, I celebrate giving kids candy. In other words, you don't want to rob the children of their opportunity to get a bag full of candy, but you don't participate in any of the occult activity. No, no, no. I mean, and that's like, I mean, do I like wear a mask or something? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's Halloween, you know, but I mean, there was, there was Halloween nights. I'd be with my friends and I'd be blackout drunk playing with Ouija boards or, you know, smoking weed, all kinds of stuff, you know? And I mean, that's just doing your cocktail. Sure. Right. I, I, I'm curious about what you think of Christians who think that the holiday uh, is terrible, uh, 
I can just share with you as a young child, my parents uh, became Christians and I celebrated Halloween in my memory when I was like four. I think mm-hmm. maybe that was my first time remembering it. Mm-hmm. And then by the time I was five, uh, it was out. Like it was, oh my gosh. And my parents went to these talks where some ex Satanist stands up and gives this talk. And, and largely most of these people have been discredited, unfortunately. Um, I don't know if what they said was true or false. I mean, it just doesn't look good. Um, and so for years, my parents shuttered the house, turned out all the lights and took us to Chi Chi's Mexican restaurant, which is defunct. And we got to go there and eat Mexican food. Sounds fun. Yeah. And I was hacked off because my mom didn't understand that for the next month, my friends were bringing in hands, handfuls of candy yeah. every lunch day. And I got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with no candy. And then I said, Mom, I don't get any candy. And she got me like one candy bar. Mm. See, I, ever since I was a kid yeah. that I can remember, Halloween was Christmas in my house. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was, and that specifically was a, a, a my dad's favorite ho- holiday is Halloween. Yeah. And so, you know, every year we, we were decorating the house. And, yeah, there are people who enjoy yeah. it regardless of the yeah. connections. Yeah. They just like the decorations yeah. and the fun. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I grew up with horror fun. movies and, yeah. and, and, and they enjoy that and gore. Yeah. I, you know, and still to this day, I do enjoy that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, and it's tough because, I mean, I grew up with a genuine love for Halloween. Just the, the just the environment, the 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 scariness. You know, that's something that it yeah. was like an adrenaline rush for me. I like that kind of stuff. My parents drew a straight line yeah. to every single thing. There's witches. There's ghosts. Yeah. There's ghouls. There's fear. My parents the, never. They never looked at it like that. All these things are. What do you say to people who say to you, "Fine, I understand that in everyone that in in in, in some uh, five year old's mind." who's mm-hmm. walking around with their mommy and they're dressed up like Charlie Brown. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or, or, you know, Deadpool mm-hmm. and they have a little bag and they come to your door and without any thought whatsoever of what they m- are saying, they say trick or treat and you give them a treat. And then you look at them and say, how can you, how can you allow your child to participate in this with the, with the connectivity of all of these all these tropes all i don't i don't know if people understand that word all these forms mm-hmm. you know like an easter egg yeah. where did that come from okay like like uh a, the easter bunny where did that come from you know people ask these questions they say well they you can draw it a line back to pagan uh holidays and listen, i mean that's in everything that we do if you, you know it it, and, it, it, it is and yeah. that's the long standing history sure. of Constantine yeah. and the merger of politics, society, and church. Yeah. I, I mean, these, I mean, humans have been practicing pagan things forever. And, mm-hmm. and, and I mean, and these are in common practice things that are nowadays. And I mean, like I, 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 me personally, like when I, when I see another Christian being, you know, just flat out bashing Halloween or right. Easter or Christian or, or, or Christmas, you know, it's, it's corny to me. That's just my own my own take of it in a way, because, I mean, like I said, you 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 get out of it what you what you put into it. And if the kid dressed as Charlie Brown is coming up to your door asking for candy, is he going to be possessed by the devil that night? Odds are probably not. Yeah. You know, so and, you're you're what um, you're what philosophers might call uh, uh, in the stream of common sense realism. OK, mm-hmm. and you're asking yourself, does this, in fact, have any connection practically to this? You know, I, I believe in, in my in my time, in my experience. And yeah. You, you when you when some, you would have had to have done something to invite them in. You know, what so I mean? you disregard the. I didn't know it, um, but I accidentally participated and called upon this power. So, for example, no. you know, like people say there are certain names that you, uh, if you utter, um, mm-hmm. I've never seen Beetlejuice, okay? 
But mm. you know, the the idea is that even if you don't know what you're calling upon, Bloody it, Mary, yeah, Bloody, that yeah. well, that you, I unfortunately have negative experiences in that area. Mm. Okay, but I did mean what I said. No, yeah, and I mean like, <clears throat> yeah, I mean at one point was I ignorant? doing ouija boards i mean me personally no I, I mean i knew what i was doing yeah but that's explicit yeah see i think yeah. i think I mean, you're like, going to the intent aren't you you're going to the intent mm -hmm. um there's a worldview out there that and unfortunately for the guests who are over here they they don't realize that that they are actually far more taking their cues not from a biblical worldview which is supernatural mm -hmm. but from an animistic worldview where there's a spirit in everything. So they'll cast out the demon like, I got up this morning and people might be able to hear I have a scratchy voice. They try to cast out the demon of 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 a cold. Mm. And you know, if someone has back pain, they cast out the yeah. pain of the back. And, and it and it and it, it, it they don't I, recognize that that is a thoroughly unbiblical way of viewing the world. And, and maybe subconsciously it makes them feel better that they're doing that. You know, but truth be told, I mean, the five year old wearing the Charlie Brown costume will more than likely not be possessed on Halloween night. Yeah, because he just wants Snickers. Because you understand that that if you have an animistic slash magical view of the world, mm -hmm. uh, the supernatural is mechanistic. Mm -hmm. It's yes. not personal. Yeah. OK, they do personalize it. But if they re if you really You're a vessel. Yeah. If you dr drill down. Right. Yeah. There's no spirit in the bush there's no spirit mm -hmm. in the tree there's yeah. no spirit in the the word there's no spirit in the the, the name yeah there, th this is where people like get into all kinds of calling on the calling out the leviathan spirit mm. and they name everything and they have this this magical slash animistic worldview that they import and one of the things, and I, I've tried to talk to people about this, and they really don't go for it because they can't see it. They're blind. It's like you don't even see your own contacts. I'm wearing contacts. I can't see them. Mm. I would need you to, or myself to reach in and pull it out of my eye. Yeah. Okay? You got to be careful with that. Because because just think about it. Like they, they, They're so close to it. And I, I will say to them, I say, as someone who's been steeped in the biblical worldview, for more than 25 years, I say to them, do, do you not see that you're actually importing animistic, magical um, worldview items into the Christian faith, labeling them, going and finding the closest thing that you can in the Bible, and then proof texting that in order to 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 justify. And then they'll mm -hmm. go they'll go two, three, four steps beyond and create an entire nomenclature and system and then these are the exact kind of people that would be like i don't care if 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 if, if wearing masks came from scaring away I need spirits, to get rid of the demon of headaches then, then, then i can't then, do it my head hurts today i got the demon of headaches well there is that yeah no, so but. so you're you're a realist <laughs> you're looking at it and saying listen i have a personal experience with the occult and mm. nah i mean just, truth just be I, I, yeah i mean I, I, if coming from a from a hierarchical standpoint, demons yeah. are in, and angels too are below humans, and in order for one, uh, more so demons in specific, to um to to become part of you, there has to be some sort of invitation. Yeah, I, they, I, they, I don't, you know, I, and, I've never and, and dressing up is n insufficient. No, I mean, yeah. I, uh, that I mean, that's just my experience. I'm no, I'm not a demonologist. I'm not an expert. I don't have you sure. know a doctor in any degree or right. a, I never went to college. But I can only tell you from what I know, what I did, the things that I experienced firsthand. And so what what do you, what do you say about the forms, the tropes, witches, ghouls, demons? You know, it, it you know is this a positive thing or should we ask our children to not wear those kind of outfits? I, I mean, it, it kind of, I'm, it, man, that's a tough question. That is a really tough question because yeah, like there, like I said, there are two sides to that sword. You know, if I, if I do heroin once, yeah. Am I an addict or did I just do heroin? 
I don't know. It would probably depend upon so your system. So if I can guarantee you that if I did heroin, I would hate it. So if, if I dress up my kid as Charlie Brown instead of a demon, does that make him not partake in the same kind of Halloween that others are? I you think know? that's I think that's largely dependent upon someone's view of Halloween. I think so too, and I think that you you, you can't just. Man, that is a tough question. Well, I think this is a very tough question. I mean, this is this is something that I struggle with. Yeah. Uh, and I, like I said, I find myself in the middle. We let our kids dress up in princess outfits and Star Wars outfits and things that, I mean, even then Star Wars might be questionable by some because of its uh, hodgepodge of, of religious worldviews that Lucas wove in. Um I, I mean, these. Uh, t- to be honest, these are the same people. That and I think, was always, I was always uncomfortable. These are the same people who think monster energy is demonic and satanic. I mean, come on, Let, just. Th- Have you ever seen that? What's that? What's that thing that Aaron Rodgers said? He's like, you just gotta relax. R E L A X. Relax. Relax. Have you ever seen that Elon Musk, yeah. um, video series that he made a whole bunch of reels? And I don't know if it was on the Joe Rogan podcast or what it was because I haven't watched the originals. But he basically goes through um, the persuasive points for conspiracy theory theory after conspiracy theory. And he he's like dead. He's dead serious, but he's acting Hmm. and he makes you believe each one of these conspiracy theories that he himself, I'm sure, does not Mm -hmm. adhere to. But he knows that you can come up with endless illustrations that to the to the to the the short te- the short attention span listener will formulate an opinion quickly and think that they've covered the entire scope of the subject. I did want to cover one thing cuz I think I I might have missed up just a little bit and I just wanted to make sure. make it clear that like it, it, when I said by invitation. Yeah. That can also be based out of ignorance, too. Okay. Meaning you didn't know what you were doing. So, and that can be... I so mean, how does that apply to kids and candy I mean, and you, decorations? And- I mean, like, you know, I could be... I mean, I mean that's, that's kind of the thing. I mean, you know, a kid dressing up as Satan for Halloween, or it can be something, you know... I mean, I don't know. And I, tr- truth be told, I mean, I've every year less and less have celebrated Halloween just because one, I'm not around my dad. So it's not as fun. Okay. You know, two, I mean, that's kind of a, that's an area, that's an area I think of like relapse for me a little bit too. Okay. Um, and I mean, for me, I, I mean, I, I, me personally, I <clears throat> experienced a lot of like depression and a lot of anger and frustration around this time of year. For, yeah. I don't know, and I and, and I don't know if it's just like lingering stuff. I don't know, but so what do you say to let's turn to the biblical? I'm trying to I'm trying to like formulate or articulate it well. But sure, it's, that's really that 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 question. And should Christ, Christians celebrate Halloween? My my blanket answer is no. Okay, so let's go biblical. Okay, okay? and I I don't. But you can if you want to. Okay, because. If you're just dressing as Charlie Brown and getting candy, get candy. So here's what the Apostle Paul know. would say to the Corinthians. Okay. Yeah. He would say, you should not go to the temple and eat the meat offered in the temple. Oops. If you go to someone's house, this is in 1 Corinthians 9 and 10. Mm-hmm. If you go to someone's house and they offer you meat, uh, eat it. But if they tell you it was offered to an idol, don't. Why? Not because you're going to be possessed by an evil spirit, but because of the conscience of the other person. Yeah, the integrity of it. Yes. And he says, basically, in many, many places in Scripture that, and this is in keeping with what Jesus taught, it's not what comes out of the person excuse me, it's the opposite. It's not what goes into the person, but what comes out of them. Right. It's not about what food you eat. And so he called all food clean. If I, if I woke up Halloween morning and Uh I said, this is Satan's day. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to do the Ouija boards. 
Yep. I'm going to do my seances. You know, I'm going to I'm going to listen to my music. Yep. I'm going to wear what, you know, makes me feel just enveloped in that spirit. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. But if the kid dresses Charlie Brown is just trying to get candy, he's not that same person. See, so what that kid is at the risk of oversimplification. Sure. What that kid is, is what the Apostle Paul's list says later on, that um, an idol is nothing. You, you, meat, the meat offered to an idol is nothing. It holds no personal power. Mm. So if you eat it in faith, everything is clean. But if you believe and you're engaging in the demonic activity of the demons that are behind the idols when people personally engage and call upon them, yeah. now you're in trouble. You're inviting them. You're inviting them. Then the second question is, how much liberty of conscience is available to the Christian? So, for example, um, I know people that think erroneously that al all alcohol is bad on the basis of a biblical argument. I've heard the most outlandish, absurd things that Jesus never drank wine. He drank grape juice. Of course, this is ridiculous because all you've got to do is leave grape juice alone for a few days and it automatically becomes wine. Mm -hmm. All right. That's the first layer. The more profound layer is the Bible makes very, very clear that people get drunk on wine. And then from the very biological baseline, the reason why people made wine thousands of years ago was to preserve it mm -hmm. it would spoil well not only well, uh, correct me if i'm wrong i could be wrong on this is just something i heard but um didn't they used to drink wine because the water was contaminated more often this than is not? this is thoroughgoing in, in all cultures that alcohol became a standard beverage low level alcohol standard beverage right. for low everyone level. yeah including children and was often drank at breakfast yeah and why? Well, because if you drank the water and you didn't have water, you would get sick. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, just a brief excursus. Um, there's entire studies that show that cultures that boil their water to make tea or to make beer, right, are light years ahead of the cultures that didn't. Hmm. There's a there's a and this is a highly controversial argument because it gets it gets framed as racist. OK, it's not racist. OK, Africa never boiled their water. Africa has lagged behind the global scale. The Chinese boiled their water. They were at the cutting edge of technology before everyone else. They had health better than anyone else. Why? They boiled their water. I mean, the I, Europeans made beer. It's interesting. I, I don't I mean, I. I I could see from a, a, a fundamental standpoint that makes sense. And then they went through the Renaissance and they began to travel all over the world. Marco Polo. Right. Mm -hmm. And they brought back tea. They brought back coffee. Yeah. And then you watched that invade all of European society. And you watch the societies that boil their water and drink alcoholic beverages. They go skyrocket in terms of health. OK, mm -hmm. so go back to we, we've we've taken this brief travel of history <laughs> You can go back to your argument again. So in John chapter two, Jesus is at this wedding. Everybody's drinking. They run out of alcoholic wine. Mm -hmm. And you know it's alcoholic because what the master says, he says to Jesus when Jesus turns the ritual water, uh, 100 gallons plus mm -hmm. of water, yep. um, he turns this into the finest wine that, that the master's ever tasted. And he says, why did you bring out the best wine when the guests have already drank the B team wine. And the implicit understanding of this is that you bring out the B team wine. You don't bring out your best wine first. You, or excuse me, you bring out your best wine first. They get drunk off the best wine and then you start serving them the cheap wine. Yeah, it tastes good. And they don't care because they're yeah. drunk. Yeah. yeah. But Jesus did the opposite. They ran out of their best wine and he brings them even better wine. And the guy's like, why did you wait? Like, this is so backwards. Mm -hmm. It's backwards only on the basis of it being an alcoholic beverage. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't make any sense. And so we know that the Bible prohibits getting drunk. And yet we and that is specifically because wine was the major beverage. Yeah, they had beer. They didn't really have distilled spirits in Jesus's day. OK, we know the Egyptians drank some kind of low level beer that they made from grains and they fed that to everybody.
that and, and you know it was like sort of oatmeal like i think mm-hmm. um and there are a lot of cultures that do that and so the so that so the argument goes that people who have a naive view uh, a mechanistic magical animistic view of the world are more inclined to say no and use weak plucked out of context concepts and bible verses in order to attack this so in the same way a christian can biblically drink wine why jesus drank wine all the apostles drank wine mm-hmm. they did not drink to excess because yeah. they were filled with the spirit right mm-hmm. and so the same thing i think could be said today about don't do halloween in excess <laughs> and 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 that yeah but i was going to go one step know, deeper than that joke, no that's but... fine but couldn't you could we say then that halloween is really an issue of someone's faith Mm-hmm. Yep. So the question then becomes, what is your faith? And I mean that sincerely to you personally and to anyone who listens to this. What is your faith? What is your what is your conscience telling you? And that is going to be a unique thing that is not going to be transferable. Mm-hmm. You can you can persuade. Right. But that does not originate anywhere else but between you and God. Me personally. I f- I feel less inclined to celebrate it uh, more and more every year. Like I said, only because I one I'm I feel like I'm more vulnerable mm-hmm. to a lot of things, and th- those things that we're talking about, I like those things. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. I enjoy that stuff. Yeah. Maybe not so, not present day right now. No, I'm yeah. saying, but you know, Eli, Elijah, Eli as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoys that stuff. And mm. that stuff is open doors, invitations to those things. And I know these things are invitations. And I just, I, I, I stay away from present danger mm. per se. Yeah. And it's dangerous. It, it, it's preference and it, it's personal preference on that holiday based on that person and their experience with whatever you deal with. If every single Halloween you've ever, you know, celebrated, you dressed as Charlie Brown and you have nothing but good memories and you just, you look at Halloween as candy, then that's what that is to you. Yeah. But if Halloween is what it was to me every year, that's a different kind of Halloween. Yeah. And, I, and, and that's fascinating. So you've, so, so I, I don't, I want to see, I want to through by way of, pers- did I make that? Does yeah. That make sense. Yeah. So, so when I was a kid, I dabbled in the occult. Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't really think of it like that, but I certainly was. Yeah. I did bloody Mary things. Mm-hmm. I, oh, yeah. you know, explored, uh, occult literature. Um, I watched horror films and my mom and I had this, this fascination you know, I, I could not get away from it. My mom forbid me. And later we found out that that's because there's a bloodline curse on my family, which has been broken. And once that bloodline curse was broken, um, I no longer want, and we've talked about this on past episodes. I, I, I have no interest, mm-hmm. none. And it was like you shut, you shut off a light switch. Yep. Except the, except, except rather it's the opposite. The light switch was turned on. There's no more darkness. Yeah. And I don't I'm, I have no interest in, in horror films. In fact, I think find them cheesy because the things that I've seen make Hollywood look stupid. Mm-hmm. And I mean that sincerely. I've, there's nothing in Hollywood that they can produce that is more scandalous and more scary than what I've personally experienced. OK, the second thing is, is that I have no interest in it anymore. It, it, it holds no fascination for me. And like you, it reminds me of the past that I've come out of, I've come yep. out of darkness and now I walk in the light. Why would I go back to the darkness? Right. And I mean, for me, every day was like Halloween, you know, right. And, and like, the, I mean the, the, the things that, you know, uh, and you know, I'm like, kind of like, there's a lot of, you know, every year and more and more, I'm more open about this kind of stuff. And, uh-huh. um, it's difficult to talk about because majority of the people that, um, I grew up with don't know these kinds of things about me. 
Okay. Um, because I, it, it, I was very, I was a closed door about things that I did. Yeah. Um, especially as a teenager. I mean, I was awful. Hmm. Uh, um, I, I mean, when I look at m- my life up until, you know, I was saved, I mean, like, it's pretty obvious that, you know, I was going through some crap and I might have invited a couple things I probably shouldn't have. Yeah. And, and so my, my, my point with that is that I, I made, I mean, we're using Halloween as the example because I mean, everybody looks at Halloween as the, 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 uh, the the final evil day of the year the high evil day yeah but to me i mean halloween was just a fun day to only amplify things that i do on a daily basis so what do you think then i mean just because of the halloween just be just because of its um because of its appearance what people know halloween to be yeah you know what i mean what do you say if people let's let's finish the biblical um argument then it says, you know, if you eat meat in front of someone and they tell you that it's been offered to an idol, you don't do it. Or if you know that someone uh, won't touch meat and they've sort of gone vegetarian, if you will. I don't know if that's actually implied in the text, but it seems to be. Um, or only their own slaughtered animal, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, that they know where its origin is from and, and that it isn't it doesn't have any kind of ritualistic connections. Um, I said, don't do it. Why? Because of the conscience of the other individual. Mm -hmm. Well, so here's what I've chosen to do. Uh, I've chosen not to practice Halloween publicly. Mm -hmm. um, And I'm very careful not to promote it for for concern of people whose conscience will be violated or who are coming out of the darkness. What do you say about people who have alternative Halloween practices like a Holy Spirit party? You know, and we we have to be careful because some Mm -hmm. of our friends may listen to this and Mm -hmm. we want to be respectful. I'm asking you personally, don't attach it to the people that host it. Imagine I hosted a Halloween party. okay? or imagine, you know, Nate Grywe in our Mm -hmm. small group. He hosts. Shout out, Nate. Yeah, Nate, you're awesome. Um, Impeccable golf player. I'm just going to say that right now. I'm coming up on him here. He's he's he's, he's, we'll see. So he's too serious. (laughs) Nate, you're too serious. Okay. But let's say the Grywees host a Holy Spirit party to give their children and other people an alternative to Halloween sure. and practice this in order not to violate people's consciences. What do you think of that? Truth be told. Yeah, we were, we're interested in your opinion. M- m- see, my opinion's a little bit rough. Okay. I think it does nothing. Other than you were just having a fun party. I mean, in truth, I mean, if you make, I mean, it goes back to the whole uh, making everything magical and giving everything spirits and, uh-huh. and the, this and that. I mean, if you're if you're looking at it from that standpoint, I mean, one, it is wrong, but two, uh, if it makes you feel better, do it. Okay. You know what I mean? Like So I, so you're not opposed to these things. No, I'm not I, opposed I, to it. I, I mean if you want to have a taco party on Halloween night, go for it. Yeah. But I, but I, if you're uh-huh. if you're if you're doing it in a way that makes people feel bad because you know or or, or better way let me word it better. If you're doing it to outwardly say I want nothing to do with Halloween or people that celebrate Halloween yeah. as a Christian, I also think you're making a mistake too. What if it's just an alternative for people to not help not help people not violate someone else's conscience? It's a good choice. It's a good choice. Yeah. I, so I, I personally have participated in these yeah. things. I find them I, enjoyable. I'm not just because. Well, I, it gives me something to do. Sure. Yeah. You know, I don't have to participate in the holiday directly. I don't have to hand out candy. You know what I mean? I and I've I've shared that opinion with people in the past, and they're not so accepting of that. You know, they think like they're they're fighting evil, and they got their sword and shield, and they're. Right, so they, they push back hard on that. No. And truth be told, I mean, like, evil is more concerned with the people that accept it. Yeah, I find it really fascinating from a, from a, how you, how we raise our children point of view. Yeah. Um, 
I don't have children yet, but well, there's time. So the <laughs> shout out Jillian. The <laughs> awesome Jillian is awesome. <laughs> That's Eli's wife. Uh, so you you provide an opportunity for the kids to have fun. Mm. You don't rob them wholesale yeah. of something that their culture is telling them that they could participate in. You provide them an alternative. Yeah. Um, I think that's a slippery slope. I think that's pretty dangerous. You mm. can you can get pretty crazy really quick with that um, and become very isolationist. And uh, you're you're so heavenly minded. You're of no earthly good. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, that and that's that was kind of bringing up a thought that I had in my head, you know, looking at it because uh, it's nice because for me, I have the ability to go back into the mindset of pre-Christian right. times and, right. and I can look at it from an outsider's point of view, looking right. into the church. Yeah. You know, the same people that would outcast or even downcast somebody for someone for celebrating Halloween or being a Satanist. I mean, if and, and this is the argument that I make all the time. I mean, like. Hadn't a Christian accepted me as a Satanist and brought me into their taco party. Yeah. I would never be a Christian today. Wow. Truth be told. Well, then there's, the, it seems to me that if there's an opportunity uh, with the, some of these events to be positive. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I mean, I came up here as a, a, a cold blooded Satanist and I say that hundred percent hand on the bible that that was me eight seven eight years ago yeah on on the verge of suicide i I came i came up here two weeks after i wanted to do that wow uh you know my uncle chuck he's i mean one of the reasons that i'm here talking to you but um i i mean i i came here and the 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 church that i was a member of at the time i mean they had a a a community of people my age and they were aware of who elijah is you know who eli is at that time i went as i went as elijah um it's your birth name yeah my my just for fun fun fact yes my real name is elijah i call myself eli when I converted to Christ to be a new, yes, a new uh, reborn. I'm different. Uh, I don't, I don't denounce my real name. I just one because nobody can ever spell it, but two, it's just, it's easier for everybody to remember. But anyway, um, you know, I, I, I went to these events and these people would take me, take me in knowing full well who I was. And they took my banter and they took the words that I said and, you know, I didn't even want to be there in the first place, but I was forced to be there by my uncle, you know, just because I had nothing else to do. Did you some good, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. But th- th- those people setting aside their own beliefs, their own biblical standpoints, and looking at me as a person in need of saving is precisely why I even... I mean, not pres- that's not the entire. Obviously, it's Jesus the entire reason. Sure, but but he it, used that. I call it the amalgamation <clears throat> of godly representation. Yeah, that's it's great. A bunch of little things going on at the same time that made me want to pursue Jesus, and yeah. one of those little things was those people. Yeah. But if those same little people are, you know, making people feel bad because they're celebrating Halloween. Or right. because they listen to some certain kind of music, or do this and that, or if they're, you know, we can be we can be very very open here, homosexual. I mean, like, I mean, w- to me, it just I, I feel like it's 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 almost a contradiction, mm-hmm. you know. And I think in my head, if Jesus were at this party, what would he do? He'd have a taco. He'd have a taco and he'd go talk to the nearest Satanist. Yeah. Why? Because that's who he goes for. Yeah. You know, and and if you're, and I mean, I'm not saying that any party's going on. This is precisely why they're having the parties is to combat evil. I'm just saying, I know that those parties exist. Right. And I know that, I, I, I know that some people's angles are that way. And they think that if they go to this party, yeah, they are protected. 
and evil will not touch me completely false yeah that's a false uh, and, and, picture and, of the world yes and, yeah and, there's the it, to just go back to sure. my childhood i mean i think that one of the things that was curious to me is i got a very mechanistic worldview from that i also got a very legalistic worldview from that mm-hmm. um and i don't think it served me well and I, and i think that you're pointing out some of the things that look if you're going to do this do it for an issue of conscience do it for an issue of outreach do it for an issue of yeah. acting like christ yes. don't don't think that you're protecting yourself by your mechanistic Holier walls. Holier than thou. Yeah, and th- this I'm glad you mentioned that because I really feel like there's a lot of people that actually think that they have an elevated spirituality because they don't eat pork. <laughs> These Torah followers. I want to be like, have you read the New Testament? Like, do you, do you understand we have a new covenant? A new, co- it means it's new, it's better. If the old covenant were could save you, if it made you more spiritual and yeah. holy, y- you could have adhered to that. But no, you, we don't. We have Christ, yeah. and they, they, it's so, so, so retro, right? Yeah. And I think the same thing is true in Halloween. We can give the false impression that we're holier than other people. That is the most backwards anti-gospel thing to do, and it and it actually violates people far worse than may perhaps a conscience violation because you're actually undermining the gospel, yep. and you're calling people to not to do that but to do the proper. I'm going to step on some toes here. Yeah, go ahead. We can we can we can talk Taylor Swift. Oh my goodness, you want to bring Taylor Swift up? Not that's a quagmire. Oh no. Anyway, so and. No names, no names are dropped, nothing. Yeah. But, you know, whether or not Taylor Swift is saved, that's not my, that's not my business to know. Okay. Um, my business is to pray for her. Uh-huh. Um, and be a, 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 a brother in Christ to her. Right. Okay. Um, but because she does things without and, and the things that she does in music videos and stuff if you don't like if you don't know who Taylor Swift or why she does the things it looks crazy well i mean this so i can i can tell you that this makes so much sense to me both because of the past references we've had where people listen to a little persuasive yes. reel and they think they've cornered the market on it and yes. then what they end up doing is they end up through social media sharing it like wildfire it goes viral someone reads one little clip they have no context for it Mm -hmm. they do not understand it they see an image that they think that they can rightly interpret and then they make a judgment call she's dressed as she's dressed as a devil in a music video based off of things that other people have said about her so she was mocking them in regards to that right so but because if you don't listen to taylor swift yep and she's dressed like that yep and you've got that mentality. You just immediately interpret it. Now she's a Satanist. Well, this is artistic expression. Sure. So, it, and I'm not, and I'm not defending anything so it, that she's doing. Here's something you know? that I'm just here, saying. Oh, I am, but I'm not. Yeah, condoning it. So I've seen again. This, this is why you're a realist, okay? So I've seen this pattern with Christian artists repeatedly, okay? So um, I've had people listen to Christian artists that I know personally or artists that I know enough about their life and their history to know that they're totally solid. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with them. Yeah. Right. Uh, the latest iteration of this was, um, uh, Brandon Lake's video. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. and it's very dark and I can't remember the name of the song. I feel so bad. Um, I can't remember. I know I, I have, I've, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You know, about. and what the video begins very dark and it's very almost like eerie and it the 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 beat is really strong you know what i mean and people are like i was like oh yeah brandon lake's my favorite artist look at this and they're like that's demonic look how dark it is he's satanic and i'm like dude do you know his story do you know like why he wrote that song have you like have you listened to it longer than 15 seconds to understand what the lyrics actually say if Mm -hmm. i gave you a transcript of the lyrics you would be like this is the best christian song of the year and they 
they're not willing to do that because they take this quick snapshot interpretation mm -hmm. based on the visual representation or whatever they think. They don't think about artistic expression. They don't think about the history of the artist. They don't think about what the message, the intended message of the the artistic expression is yeah, yeah. in visual and audio form, mm -hmm. musical form. And I, I truly believe that th this is happening with Halloween. Yeah. People are taking this snapshot of it. They make quick interpretations of it and they've got their one minute conspiracy theory reel about it. And then, then, and then unfortunately with Halloween, it's more complex obviously, but, sure. but they're doing the same move. They are making themselves more holy, not on the basis of obedience and faith in Christ, but on their external practices. We what call, they don't do. Jesus railed against that. That's yeah. that's modern. That's neo Pharisaism. Yeah. It's legalism. It's anti gospel. It may be demonic. Uh, and to me, you know, I. I may, I, I think of it, you know, I was talking with my wife about this. It's like, you know, if, if Taylor Swift had the same music video. Yeah. You know, what would people say about that? Don't disregard what people's religious beliefs are. Sure. You know, they would say whatever they want to say, but because it's Brandon Lake, this is different. Yeah. yeah. Point is, you know, if, if we're so quick to look at someone and call them satanic and we avoid them, you know, it makes me think about what people think about me. You know, when they, when, you know, the, the same people that love me and, and care for me, mm -hmm. you know, what do they, what do they truly think about me and my past? You know, do they, you know what I mean? Like, do they, do they, had they, because there's been people that have disassociated from me because they found out things like that about me. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. And and this is the or this they, is the horrible they thing, take a backseat to it, and they, and, and they take a very uh, Levi slash Matthew like approach, like absolutely not. That's a tax collector and a sinner. Mm -hmm. That person parties with prostitutes. Mm -hmm. Their that person is a a traitor and a terrorist to God and His people. How dare you associate with such a person? And you say, do you not understand that that person's been with Jesus? Mm -hmm. yep. Are you not willing to give that person uh, a gospel read? And I think that this is probably a good time for us to pause. This this special is for Halloween. Mm -hmm. And we're now going into <laughs> some of the things that we want to talk about in yeah. the next episode. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a break and we're going to do part two. So, so we'll say thank you so much for listening to this Halloween special of the Bridgepoint podcast. And till we get together again, keep your eyes on Jesus and let's follow him together. Enjoy your taco party. <laughs>